Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now another AAA game, another chance for AMD's Athlon 3000G to prove itself. This time we're testing the Call of Duty Vanguard open beta that's available to play until Monday the 20th at 6pm BST or the equivalent depending on where you live. With a couple of months until the full game's release, I don't think we'll see much of a performance difference between now and then, but I could be wrong, and the 3000G with its two cores, four threads, and integrated Vega 3 graphics might do a lot better or a lot worse come November. There's nothing fancy about my setup, the APU is paired with a basic A320 motherboard and 16 gigs of dual channel 3200 MHz DDR4 memory. Dual channel is important for getting the best out of this APU, and while we might see slightly higher performance figures from faster memory, the onboard graphics will probably be more of a limitation. I knew this probably wasn't going to go well, considering my 4 gig RX 460 was exhibiting some serious slowdown at the lowest settings, but bear in mind this was at 1080p and where we're going, well, you've seen the last of 1080p for this video, put it that way. So while the game is compiling the shaders here, which always takes ages, especially with something like the 3000G, I thought I'd show you the settings. As you can see, we're using the Vega 3 integrated graphics. Everything is set to low. Now what I did notice is that I couldn't set the render resolution um, below about the equivalent of 720p for each setting. Um, this may be something that's fixed with the final release, but I'll tell you what I mean as we move on to 1080p. All right, so already things weren't looking good. I've had to use Microsoft's built-in frame rate tool that comes with Windows 10 because MSI Afterburner doesn't work. As you can see, we're only in the menu, and uh, as my squad joined me here, well, we saw some horrendous frame dips. Now, at 1080p, we can only select 66% render resolution, so 66% of... 1080p we're using here we're seeing about 23 frames per second on average there are no exact averages for this video because i couldn't really measure them but this is something that will hopefully change by the time the game is finally released i wonder if we can actually kill anyone at this frame rate will the guy playing at 20 fps wipe out someone with a 30 80 let's have a look here's go on go on. <laughs> there we go <laughs> that was actually quite a surprise. This is one of my first games. Okay, let's move on to 900p. Now here I could only use 80% resolution scaling, so there really isn't much of a difference between the resolution. We're using 80% of 900p here, which is pretty similar to 66% of 1080p. It comes out to about 720 versus 712 or something like that and we can't actually go below that which is why whether you're playing at 1080p 900p or 720p with the lowest render scale set from the options menu well you aren't going to see any better performance than this with a 3000g around 24 25 fps which is why i had to take drastic action now thankfully Call of Duty Vanguard has a lower than 720p option selectable from the menu and that is 800 by 600. Now I've stretched the image to full screen here. You might not want to do that, you might want to play in a sort of windowed mode. Um, this just stretched to full screen by default but at 800 by 600 the game is playable with at least 30 frames per second. Now some of you may disagree on the whole 30 FPS is playable thing but this feels night and day um, from 22, 23 FPS that we were getting at 66% of 1080p or 80% of 900p. This really is a much better way to play, even if we cannot see at all. Oh, I thought we were going to wipe someone out then. What is going on on screen? It's actually not that bad. 800 by 600 isn't terrible, but yeah, in an ideal world, you'd probably be wanting to play at a higher resolution than this. If you have an Athlon 3000G with two cores, oh no, grenade, and four threads, come on, yes. The man playing with the 3000G has wiped someone out. <laughs> in an ideal world, you'd probably want to play at a higher resolution with higher frame rates, but if you have a 3000G with integrated Vega 3 graphics, you can't get hold of a discrete GPU, then rest assured you can play the Call of Duty Vanguard Beta with 
nothing else but the integrated Vega 3 graphics. And somehow in 2021, this thing is still surprising me. You might look at this and think, well, that's actually terrible, but you've got to think about what this chip is and what it was when it launched. It cost about 30 or 40 pounds and it can play AAA titles, albeit um, <laughs> even if it does make them look like a child's drawing. But there we go. The 3000G takes down another AAA <laughs> title. Um, yeah, I'm not very good at this game, as you've seen, but there we go. The 3000G takes on Call of Duty Vanguard and wins. Yeah, that, that might be a bit of a stretch, but if you like this video, leave a like on it, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.